Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got a really inexpensive Chromebook tablet to take a look at today. This is from Lenovo. This is their Chromebook 10e tablet. The E stands for education and the 10 stands for its 10 inch display. And this is a Chromebook that is in tablet form, but if you attach a keyboard to it, it'll work just like any other Chromebook. Right now, it is being liquidated on Lenovo's website for $99. I got an affiliate link in the video description if you want to check it out. I suspect that once these sell out, they'll be gone forever. Uh, so if you're looking for something inexpensive to play around with Chrome OS on, this is definitely, I think, worth checking out. Now we're gonna jump into the review in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook tablet is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This has a MediaTek 8183 CPU. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. The storage is a bit limited for power users, but I think the average user will be able to get a good amount of applications installed on it, both on the Linux side and on the Android side. It has a 10.1 inch display. It is IPS, so you've got good viewing angles. It's decently bright. It looks pretty nice. The color looks decent on it. It doesn't uh, look too cold or washed out. And I was very pleased with just how nice it looked for its price tag. And this of course used to cost a lot more than it does now. Uh, but all in, I think you'll be very pleased with it, whether you're watching media or browsing the web. It has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it is a, a little bit taller uh, than your normal 16 by 9 display, so it's good for reading articles and whatnot. It is running at a 1920 by 1200 resolution. And the display here is pretty bright at 400 nits, not bad for a low cost device. The build quality isn't bad either. It's all plastic, but it's a very heavy duty plastic here. Uh, this was designed for the education market, so the casing here is designed to withstand falls and whatnot. It's not indestructible by any means, but it definitely feels a bit tougher than their consumer tablet called the Duet. So I was very pleased overall with the build quality. It weighs about half a kilogram or 1.1 pounds. There isn't much for ports on it though. You've got nothing on this side at all. On the bottom here, you do have a pogo plug for an optional keyboard attachment, but of course you can attach a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to it if you prefer to do that, which we will be doing a little bit later in the video. On this side, you get a USB Type-C port, and this is not just for charging. That's what the a little icon here says it's for, but it also supports video output. And a little bit earlier, we were able to do a dual display output here where we had a 1080p display hooked up and we had the uh, display on the tablet running independently. We could move windows back and forth on it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, and what was also neat is that this supports data devices. So if you get one of these little USB hubs here, you can have all of these ports functional along with video output and bring power into the tablet at the same time. So it was really nice to see a USB-C port that actually performs like you would expect a USB-C port to perform in the 21st century here. So that was a really nice surprise. You have a headphone microphone jack over here, a volume rocker and the power switch. On the top of the unit, and I say it's the top because the camera is up here at the top, you have stereo speakers along with microphones, so you get good stereo separation if you're uh, watching uh, movies or listening to music or whatever. The speakers aren't great. Again, this was designed for the education market, but it's adequate, it's loud. You can certainly get your conference calls done on it pretty well. And because it supports Bluetooth, you can connect up Bluetooth headphones or wire in some headphones directly with that headphone jack. You'll note though that it does not have any option for SD cards built in, but we were able to add that through my little hub here that has a reader. So you won't be able to add any additional storage to this unless you have something hanging off the side of it. Now battery life on this of course will vary based on what you're doing with it, but I'm finding that if you're sticking to the basics like web browsing and email and you keep the display at a reasonable brightness, you can expect to get 10 to 11 hours of battery life, very similar to what you might see on a standard Android tablet. Uh, if you are playing games on it or doing a lot on the Linux side, that of course will eat into the battery life a little bit more significantly, but I do think it will uh, last quite long, especially compared to other low-cost tablets out there, and even some that cost a lot more like an iPad. 
Uh, this has AC Wi-Fi built in, which is adequate for browsing the web and doing all the things that this tablet is capable of. And I found it browses the web quite well. It does things very quickly here. Things render in nicely. Uh, really no issues that I can see here browsing the web, even though it's got a pretty low-powered processor on board. Chrome OS is just getting better and better every year, so I found it to be a very good browsing experience. Now, a little bit earlier, we played back some YouTube video from my YouTube channel using the Chrome web browser at 1080p at 60 frames per second. The video looked great, and it played back great, too. Uh, you will notice some drop frames on the screen here, but that was only when it first got going. After it started the video playback, everything smoothed out, and it played without any issues throughout this video and a few others that we tested. One thing to note, though, is that if you are looking to watch video at 1080p with this tablet, you need to do it through the web browser and not through the Android version of Netflix, for example. And the reason is, is that on these Chromebook tablets, the Android apps do not support playing back copy-protected media at resolutions higher than standard definition in most cases. So if you are on a network go for the browser for the best video quality and only use the Android apps if you want to download video for offline viewing and just know it won't be running at the full resolution of the display. Hopefully at some point uh, Google will update the Android portion of these Chromebooks to support high definition video in Netflix and others. But right now using the Android apps you're not going to get HD video on this tablet. Use the browser instead. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 21.1 running Google Chrome. That puts it in league with other low-powered Chromebooks we've looked at over the years here. It's very close to the Chromebook Duet, which has a similar processor. And you can see also how it compares to a Raspberry Pi 4, which came in at around 17 on that test. Now, as you saw earlier, there is a webcam at the top of the device here. It is only 720p. Doesn't look that bad, actually, for a low-cost webcam. So if you are looking to do Google Meets or Zooms, shouldn't be an issue here with this tablet, even with the low-powered processor on board. The rear camera is a little higher resolution. It will shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second, but it is very basic transportation here. So this is not going to be something that you'll be uh, recording an Oscar-winning movie with, but it's better than having nothing. Now, the tablet will behave differently when you don't have a keyboard attached to it. So right now, we don't have a keyboard on board, and it will basically make everything full screen. So I just switched into the uh, vertical orientation here and we can browse around the web here a little bit so you can see how it works and I don't have the option to uh, put this into a separate window right now again because there's no keyboard attached but if I uh, put my finger into the address bar here you can see the keyboard pops up automatically the on-screen version and if I had a pen I could use uh, Google Chrome's handwriting recognition to enter in information instead of typing it so you do have some pen compatibility here uh, this will support a USI compatible pen so if you were looking for that you will have that here won't be as good as like a Samsung pen or an Apple pencil but I think it'll be uh, adequate for the task now what I'm going to do here is put this back on the stand and I'm going to switch on my Bluetooth keyboard here this is a keyboard and a mouse combo and as you can see once that connection was established now I can start putting stuff into Windows here so if you want to use this more as a computer or if you're looking to dock it with a regular display once the keyboard is attached uh, you will be able to run apps in separate windows but if you turn that keyboard off it will revert to the tablet mode so I'll switch it off here and you'll see uh, that everything will go full screen once the uh, keyboard connection here is lost. So if you're looking for Windows, you need to have that keyboard hooked up for it to give you some. Now, as you saw, we had the Google Play Store up a few seconds ago, and they do have a pretty robust library of Android apps that you can install on the Chromebook. This is a game called Crossy Road, and you can see how casual games here run pretty naturally on this device because it is a tablet with a touch screen. So a lot of these games you'll find compatible. Uh, there are games, though, like Minecraft Pocket Edition, which are not. Um, so you will have to hunt around a little bit to see which games will work with your tablet versus which ones won't. But a bulk of these casual games you will find available for you there. And it also supports game controllers for Android apps, but also the Chrome OS browser. This is an Android PlayStation emulator called DuckStation. 
and it was able to play back just fine, nice and smooth here as you can see. And my game controller also worked with DuckStation running on the Android side of the tablet here. So a very good emulation experience, I think, for the PlayStation 1 back. So that would include the uh, 80s and 90s consoles, but you may have some trouble with more advanced consoles like the Sega Saturn and others that might need a little bit more horsepower than this tablet can deliver, but still a solid retro device if you're looking to play games from the 80s or 90s. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 1,743, and that puts this one very close to the Amazon Fire HD 10 and the Lenovo Chromebook Duet, which again is the consumer version of this tablet. And it's also pretty close to the Acer Chromebook Tab, which was one of the first Chromebook tablets to come out. So performance is okay, uh, given its low-end processor, but I think more than adequate for casual Android games and a lot of the Android apps that are out there. And we also did some game streaming. This is No Man's Sky streaming from the GeForce Now service. It ran great, frame rate looked fine, and we were connecting via the AC uh, Wi-Fi that I have here in the studio, and all was good on GeForce Now. I also tested the Xbox Cloud Gaming. That worked fine, and I would imagine Stadia and others will work well on this tablet, provided you've got a good Wi-Fi connection to it. Now, they did add Linux support to these Chromebooks a little while back, and this one has that support as well. Uh, so you can run things from the command line here, but you can also load up graphical Linux apps as well. So I've got LibreOffice Calc installed, which is an open source spreadsheet. This is very similar to Microsoft Excel. Uh, you will see that some of these more robust apps will take a little bit longer to load, but once they do load up, uh, you have yourself a pretty robust spreadsheet application here that will run natively on the device. Everything that I save on this will be on this and not in the cloud. I can run this spreadsheet without an internet connection, and it's really neat to be able to load up Linux apps and have them uh, run securely on here. And if you were looking to try to you know, start playing around with Linux and open source software, this is a great place to start because you can't screw up the Chromebook if you type in the wrong thing. You can actually just reset the whole Linux installation. Uh, Linux is isolated from the rest of the system for the most part, so it's a pretty safe place to learn about Linux and open source software. Also a great place to start uh, playing around with coding with Python and other languages and IDEs. So it's a really great uh, Linux device here. It's not very fast as you can see, but it does run this software. And once it's up and running, it does appear to run quite nicely. So it's kind of fun to have a low cost tablet like this that has so many different things that you can do on it. It doesn't feel as restrictive as competing tablets do. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like Chromebooks, especially Chromebooks in tablet form, because they are very open to doing what you want to do on it as opposed to what the company wants you to do on it. It does get bogged down occasionally, especially with those Android applications. And of course, you don't have a lot of storage on here either, but it's still a really fun little toy if you're looking to mess around with Chrome OS a little bit and didn't want to buy a more expensive device just get your keyboard hooked up to it, attach a monitor, and you've got yourself a really nice little computer, I think, for very little money. Now, Chromebooks have an expiration date where they no longer get updates. Uh, the expiration date on this one is June of 2028. So at the time I'm recording this video, that's about another uh, six years of updates that you will get on this Chromebook. Once you get to June of 2028, it will still work but you will not get any additional software updates after its support period expires. But still, I think for this price, six years is a good long time to get support because a lot of low-cost tablets are not updated at all sometimes after you buy them. This one, at least, you'll get uh, six years of updates to the Chrome operating system. So altogether, not a bad deal here. Uh, keep the expectations in check, of course, given its low specs, but still, uh, a really nice value for what it is. And I'm not sure how long this will be around for. So if you were looking to get something to play around with on the Chrome OS side, probably grab this one because this is a good starting point and I think a really nice introduction to what Chrome OS is all about. So that is going to do it for this look at the Chromebook 10e from Lenovo. And until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters. 
including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.